Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to be discussing a brief non-technical overview of Bit39 Mnemonics, a really interesting backup technology used for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. This is just going to be a non-technical overview, but don't worry, there will be a follow-up that's going to cover the more technical details of Bit39 in a follow-up video. As well, we have this non-technical overview in article form at the Chain Tutorials website. Now as we get started talking about Bit39, we first need to talk a little bit about how Bitcoin addresses are generated. So every Bitcoin address starts with something called a private key that's generated. This is a secret. You would never want to share it with anyone. And this is used to sign and prove that you own some amount of Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency when you initiate a transaction on the network. Now using something called elliptic curve cryptography, a private key is used to generate a public key. This is something that's not a secret. This is something that you could give to all your friends. But in the Bitcoin world, we don't just use the public key to share with everyone. It goes through a further algorithm to generate what we call a Bitcoin address. This address is the public address used to send you some money. It's just like your address on the street, except it's a long string of numbers. And this is uh, what is used so that anyone on the network can find you and send you some amount of value. So we store all of these private keys and addresses in something we call a wallet. This wallet stores all of your private keys and all of your associated addresses that are derived from those private keys. Now, in the early days of Bitcoin, these private keys and associated addresses were derived what we call non-deterministically. Every private key was just randomly generated and the associated public key was computed from that, but there was no sort of pattern to how these addresses were derived. The problem with this was that every time a new address and new private key was generated, you would have to re-back up your wallet. So in the event that your wallet software was lost, your computer was fried, or you dropped your phone in the toilet with your Bitcoin wallet on it, you would be able to recover the funds that you had uh, that are actually stored out on the blockchain. Now this was somewhat inconvenient and it could be a problem if again you didn't have regular backups and you maybe lost access to your wallet. So you might lose a couple uh, private keys and would lose access to funds that you received in recent transactions on the network. So the developers in the Bitcoin space came up with a really cool technology called Hierarchical Deterministic or HD wallets. These wallets use one seed, one number, and a special algorithm to generate many, many private keys and addresses from that one seed. So all you would have to do is back up this one seed and the same algorithm would be able to regenerate all of your private keys, all of your addresses, and therefore all of your funds stored in a wallet. Now this is obviously much better for backups than the old non-deterministically generated wallets. But again, it's pretty hard to remember some giant string of binary or write it down somewhere without making a mistake. So Bitcoin developers took this one step further and generated a system called Mnemonics. This was introduced, for you Bitcoin nerds, in a proposal called BIP39, or Bitcoin Improvement Proposal number 39. This uses a special algorithm to take this binary seed, some large randomly generated private number, and turn it into an English set of words from 12 to 24 words. So you could go from some seed that's just again a random large number to something like army van, walnut, rug, so on and so forth from 12 to 24 English words. Now this dictionary is the same and any wallet system that implements BIP39 can use this system to generate and retrieve and recover your funds from a backup. So you can go from one seed and generate many private keys and addresses and store an entire wallet's worth of transactions and funds all by remembering 12 to 24 English words. 
This makes backups not only convenient, but much more difficult to screw up, say for example, than writing down a large binary number. And this even opens up the possibility of transferring wallets with cryptocurrency funds in secret ways, like by showing some map of words in a book, or even just you know sending it to a friend somehow in secret. Now it's important to remember, if you're using these, that mnemonics are secret. These are seeds to your private keys, and so you would never want to give your mnemonic to anyone. There are scams out there that try to get you to give up these 12 to 24 words, and you never want to fall for those. Now this has been just a brief overview of BIP39 mnemonics, and don't worry, if you're interested in the technical details, we'll have a follow-up video coming shortly. As always, there's a text article that accompanies this on the Chain Tutorials website, and there's already a technical article up if you're interested in how BIP39 is implemented more in depth. As always, I hope you found this video fascinating and informative, and thank you very much for watching.